Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at a theoretical concept known as electronegativity. Our objectives include defining electronegativity, using the position of elements in the periodic table to rank these elements in order of increasing or decreasing electronegativity, and then to also develop a way of classifying the bonding in a compound based on the difference in electronegativity between the elements that are present in that compound. Electronegativity is an estimate of how strongly an atom attracts electrons when it's involved in a bond. The biggest value is held by fluorine, which is about 4.0 although I notice on the graphic that I found online, um, they actually are using a slightly different scale, which puts the electronegativity of fluorine at 4.1. Uh, the Pauling scale is the most common scale, and it's, it caps electronegativity at 4.0. And then the smallest electronegativity is going to be held um, for some of the alkali metals like uh, potassium, cesium, and rubidium um, with a value of about 0.8, although this particular graphic holds it at 0.9. Um, and I did want to point out that noble gases are missing. If you look over there on the far right part of the table, you do not see argon and neon and helium. Um, and the reason that we're not seeing those particular elements, um, it goes back to our definition. It's how strongly an atom attracts electrons that are involved in bonding, and the noble gases, generally speaking, don't form bonds. This version of the periodic table is oriented a little bit uh, more like we're used to seeing it, and this is actually using that Pauling scale for electronegativities by putting fluorine up there at 4.0. Um, so um, the thing about electronegativity is that the closer an element is to the upper left hand, I'm sorry, upper right hand corner of the periodic table, the bigger the numerical value for its electronegativity. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule. There, are, you don't have to look that hard to find to find exceptions to the trend. Um, but for the purposes of this class, if I'm asking you about ranking elements uh, by electronegativity, we're going to go with the idea that whichever one is closest to that upper right-hand corner has the biggest one, and whichever one is furthest away has the smallest. So as an example, let's try to decide which of these elements has the smallest electronegativity. Well, it looks like um, these elements are kind of scattered through the periodic table. Three of them are in the P block and one of them is over in the S block. So I'm just going to roughly outline a periodic table here and sketch in the relative position of these elements. Fluorine is in that upper right corner. Um, phosphorus is one row below fluorine and a little bit to the left. Gallium is one row further down and a little bit more to the left. And then strontium is yet one row lower and over in the S block, so it's quite a bit more over to the left. So based just on the positions of these elements in the periodic table, it looks like fluorine has the biggest and strontium being the farthest away from that corner would have the smallest. So the correct answer to this question would be C, strontium. And if we were asked to rank these, strontium would be the smallest uh, electronegativity. Uh, followed by gallium, and then phosphorus, and then fluorine. If we were asked to go from biggest to smallest, uh, we would say that fluorine has the biggest electronegativity, followed by potassium, and then gallium, and finally strontium. So those are the ways that these uh, types of questions typically get asked. And please note, as it's mentioned down at the bottom, um, this is not a question that you should Google. 
um, because you'll probably get the wrong answer if I happen to randomly pick some elements that buck the trend. So uh, anytime I ask a question like this, I expect you to answer it based on the trend, not based on the actual um, value that you would look up in a table, because most of the time you're not going to have access to those numbers. We can address the question of why elements form an ionic or a covalent bond with electronegativity. The idea here is that if you have a small difference in electronegativity between the two atoms that are bonding, it's going to favor covalent bonding because both atoms are pulling on the shared pair of electrons equally, so they end up sharing those electrons. But if we have a big difference in electronegativity, um, it will favor ionic bonding as the more electronegative element yanks away, the electron from the less electronegative element will have this transfer of electrons and will end up with substances uh, that have charges or ions. If you have numbers for the electronegativity, you can subtract the electronegativity of the two atoms involved in the bond. And depending on what that difference turns out to be, um, determine what type of bonding is present. If you have a difference in electronegativity of less than a half, 0.5, then we would consider the bond formed by those two elements to be a pure covalent bond. If that difference fell between a half and 2.0, we would consider it polar, polar covalent. And if it was all the way up to bigger than 2.0, we would consider it ionic. Um, that correlates very well with our practical method um, of saying that um, nonmetals form covalent bonds and a metal plus a nonmetal forms an ionic bond, but it lets us break the covalent bonding down just a little bit um, into pure and polar. Um, pure covalent bonds are typically formed by carbon bonded to hydrogen, as well as any two of the same nonmetals. So for instance, if an oxygen atom bonds to another oxygen atom. But if you have two different nonmetals bonded to each other, say hydrogen bonded to oxygen, then we're going to have a um, polar covalent bond. This question is asking us to use electronegativity data to find the type of bond that's formed between oxygen and hydrogen. You may want to pause the video and go back a couple of slides and look up those numbers. I found that oxygen has an electronegativity value of 3.5, where hydrogen has an electronegativity value of 2.1. If we subtract these, we get a difference in electronegativity of 1.4. So I'll label that delta En. So delta means difference. So we just subtracted these two numbers. And En stands for electronegativity. If our difference in electronegativity is 1.4, this will correspond to a polar covalent bond. And you can go back one slide and see the breaking points. Um, 1.4 falls um, within the, the range for a polar covalent bond. Our objectives were to define electronegativity, to use the periodic trend in electronegativity to rank elements, and then to classify the type of bonding in a compound based on the electronegativities of the elements in the bonds.